Diseases in corn can occur at any time during the growing season, so it's important to scout regularly. Leaf or foliar diseases in corn should be scouted for earlier in the season. Becoming familiar with the symptoms of various leaf diseases will help you make more informed decisions about crop and integrated pest management, or IPM. As an extension field pathologist with Iowa State University, Allison Robertson emphasizes the importance of understanding foliar diseases in corn, starting with scouting. If you're concerned about foliar diseases on your crop, then you're going to want to start to scout just before the crop gets to tasseling. I don't think it's ever too early to start scouting because we get diseases that occur throughout the growing season of the crop. The type of diseases are just going to vary. For example, if we take grey leaf spot, you don't need to start scouting for that until maybe you get to V14, V15, V16. So what we're looking at here is Physoderma brown spot and the characteristic symptoms of that disease are these purple spots that occur in the midrib of the leaf and then also these light orange or, or light colored very small um, almost circular spots that occur on the lamina of the leaf. When you see those two symptoms together, those light yellow spots and the dark purple spots in the midrib, then you know you're looking at physoderma brown spot. Sometimes these yellow spots can be confused with eye spot or with southern rust. Apart from causing symptoms on the leaf, physoderma will also cause symptoms on the leaf sheaths. So you might notice some dark brown purple spots on the leaf sheath. What we're looking at here is we're looking at typical lesions of gray leaf spot. Gray leaf spot is a very um, common disease here in the Midwest. It's easy to recognize because of these rectangular lesions that you see. These are young gray leaf spot lesions starting to develop and then these are the older, more mature lesions. So you can see that they start off at about a quarter to an eighth of an inch in length. They can be as long as an inch, sometimes even as long as two inches, depending on the hybrid and how susceptible that hybrid is. One of the things that I like to do is just rip off the leaf to double check. And then I like to hold the leaf up against the light. And this way you have a much, it's much clearer to see that those lesions are occurring between the veins of the leaf and what's happening is the lesions don't expand past those veins. Northern corn leaf blight is one of those diseases that can occur anywhere in the canopy. Oftentimes on corn on corn fields where there's a lot of residue, especially if there's been a history of the disease, then we'll see the disease starting on those lower leaves and then moving up the canopy. Sometimes, however, the disease will come in later during the growing season and then we'll see the disease start in the top of the canopy like we have here. So if you look at the top of these leaves, you can see that they're blighted. This one's a really good example of how, how that disease is coming in at the top. And you might actually get this disease confused with Goss's wilt because Goss's wilt will do something very similar. What you want to be looking for with northern corn leaf blight is these very distinct cigar-shaped lesions. There's a really good example of northern corn leaf blight as well. So you can notice that those lesions are anywhere from half an inch in length and they can get really big on some more susceptible hybrids. Um, they can be six to eight inches in length. Very typical cigar-shaped lesions. You remember with the gray leaf spot that that fungus can't grow across the veins with the northern corn leaf blight fungus and can grow across the veins. And so it's very important to be able to tell whether you have Goss's wilt or northern corn leaf blight because with northern corn leaf blight you can spray a fungicide. With Goss's wilt there's nothing you can spray. It's caused by a bacterial disease. One of the things about Goss's wilt and northern corn leaf blight is you'll remember those northern corn leaf blight are distinct cigar shapes. There's a very distinct boundary between the healthy tissue and the diseased tissue. The way that we recognize southern rust is that it's usually a, almost like a smattering or a shotgun effect of pustules on the leaf. And you'll notice that they're very, very small. The other thing is that they're raised pustules. So when you look at them using a microscope or a, a little camera scope that you can attach to your camera, 
you'll be able to see those spores of the, of the rust fungus bursting out through the epidermis. The one thing about southern rust is that it's usually a little bit more orange than common rust, which is more brick red. The pustules or the spots of southern rust tend to be more circular, whereas with common rust they tend to be more elongated. And then with common rust we'll get those pustules breaking through on the top of the leaf surface and the bottom of the leaf surface, whereas with southern rust those pustules just break through the epidermis on the top of the leaf and when we look at the underside of the leaf we don't see those pustules breaking through at all. There's no silver bullet to manage a disease. There's a lot of different practices that we can use to manage that disease and depending what the disease is in our field. So getting out and scouting to find out what the disease is lets you then think about what kind of management options you might have. So for example, if you have northern corn leaf blight in your field, first of all think about the type of hybrid that you had. Is it susceptible or resistant? If it's susceptible, then you might need some additional management tools. One of the things that we can use is we can apply a foliar fungicide. My data and a lot of data from across the land grant universities suggests that the best time to apply that fungicide is as that crop is tasseling or silking through to about brown silk is when we find the best benefit from that fungicide in terms of disease control and also in terms of yield gain. Usually we'll see grey leaf spots starting to occur in corn around about tasseling time. This is a good time to also consider spraying a fungicide. Most of our fungicides available on the market have a combination of two products, a strobilurin and a triazole and any of those products would work very well at managing grey leaf spot and protecting yield. In the years following, you might want to think about rotation or residue management because that pathogen will survive in the residue. Common rust is favoured by cooler temperatures, so we usually see that at the beginning of the growing season, usually before we get to tasseling Bt. If southern rust comes in early during grain fill, so VT up to around about R2, sometimes as late as R3, we might want to consider spraying a fungicide. It's important to manage disease in your crop because diseases affect yield potential. And as a farmer, you want to maximize your yield potential. Delaro delivers powerful broad spectrum disease control with dual mode of action residual. Unlike other corn and soybean fungicides, both the triazole and strobilurin components provide extended performance. Delaro also promotes a healthy crop to utilize the full genetic potential and yield of your seed.